Hello students, this is Dr. Fazan Mirza and here I'll be covering with you planning analysis and evaluation. The first aspect that I want to do, I want to discuss with you is question one, which mostly is the, is how to plan an investigation and what to, what to do when you are given a question dealing with planning an investigation and how to state your answer and what needs to be maintained um, in a way, how your answer becomes coherent so you get best marks out of it. So when you are dealing with designing an experiment, basically designing with experiment question will be normally of eight marks or 10 marks or 12 marks, depending on how much uh, content they have in the other parts. So let's take an example. For example, if it's about 10 to 12 marks, normally it comes about between somewhere between eight and 10 and 12. So uh, there, is, uh, there, are, there, are, there are a few aspects of your answer that need to be there uh, to get you good marks. Uh, there are four things that you need to consider variables procedure safety and reliability four aspects must be there in your answer so for example when we're discussing variables your answer must be dealing with your, your answer must state what are the constant variables in the experiment what are the independent variables what are the dependent what is the independent variable or variables and what is the dependent variable so the three variables must be clearly highlighted and mentioned What's independent variable? Independent variable is the one which is being changed. You change this variable. And when you change this variable, this variable is changed by yourself. So this becomes your, your variable which you are changing. Then we have the independent, the dependent variable, the dependent variable is the one which you measure. And you have to just mention how your independent variable is changing. So the changing of the independent variable changes the dependent variable. So the change occurring in the dependent variable is completely dependent on the independent variable. Independent variable is taken on the x-axis. Dependent variable is taken on the y-axis. Already I have discussed in my previous video that independent variable is the cause and dependent variable is the effect. So the cause causes the effect. So whatever changes you see in the dependent variable are because of the cause which is being changed in the independent variable. So in an experiment, what do we do? In any experiment, we vary the independent variable. We change the cause gradually. So when we are changing the independent variable, the dependent variable changes accordingly. So when you describe the procedure, so the procedure must describe a method for how the how the independent variable is being changed, which means how you are changing the uh, changing the cause of the experiment, or uh, then then how you are measuring your dependent variable. And how can you keep the variables controlled and what are the standardized variables, the controlled variables? And then you will have to state what suitable apparatus you are using for it. Uh, and this may this may include reference to the figure provided to you or generally available apparatus that you already have started uh, in your previous grades. Uh, for example, weighing and uh, and noting volumes and volumetric flask and weighing balance and uh, and for example, thermostatically controlled water, but etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a whole list that you can. Uh, just a list down, but obviously for any experiment, uh, this will vary from case to case. Whatever apparatus is useful for that particular experiment, only that needs to be stated. Uh, so, how the solutions are measured, for example, how you are varying the concentration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then comes with the we have, we have covered the two aspects of the of the planning answer the variables and the procedure. The next comes safety. When you are discussing safety, you have to give risk assessment and risk assessment include, for example, you, you may use gloves and eye protection goggles. Uh, you should be careful using sharp objects, for example, scalpel, broken glass uh, and electronic devices, especially when you are, they, they may give you electric shock. So this will be the safety uh, for outdoor field study, for the outdoor field work, you, you should stay with the group, you should stay avoid getting lost and you should uh, wear proper clothing so that you don't really uh, get stung or bitten by an insect. So you don't get allergy. So when you were mentioning, you are mentioning the risk, the, the precautions are there. These are the precautions. And you need to state why you are using gloves. So gloves are being used because the chemical you are using, it might be written, eye protection because they might be fumes. Sharp objects may cause, uh, so cause uh, so you can say, uh, you can say uh, a cut in the skin or something and, the, and using wet uh, hands and, and using the electronic devices at the same time, this can give you electric shock. So your, your answer for safety should include risk or hazard together with the precaution. The answer mark, the answer's marks will already be, will always be there for a coupled, um, for a coupled thing. That means you have to state the precaution or the hazard together with the, uh, together with the risk. So the risk and the hazard 
together with the precaution. I think I said it the other way around. Uh, anyhow, so let's move on to reliability. What R means, R means reliability. How your experiment is reliable. So you should repeat the experiment, take an average of the experiment, uh, the basic statistical tool that you are using, chi-squared test, t-test, etc., and the mathematical manipulation, for example, how the rate is calculated, repeat it three times, the rate might be calculated one upon time or mean uh, to remove the anomalous reading. So uh, any kind of this, you may you may suggest drawing a graph with suitable axis. So yeah, all these can be added in your answer for reliability. Now, when your, uh, your, your answer for this particular question will fetch you marks for all the four things mentioned in an appropriate sequence. So, and everything should be descriptive enough for another person to use. So you have to get a big written answer and this can, comes with good practice. So you have to practice a lot of past papers. Every P5 paper that comes, you will have one question of designing in which you will be asked to design an experiment for about eight or 10 marks. Um, it may range from respirometer, photosynthometer, or chromatography, or probably gene probe, gene testing, or biodiversity, how the diversity index can be used, or how Simpson's diversity index or the bio or the experiment rank correlation can be used, or something from the neurotransmitters, how a different neurotransmitter or muscle strength can be tested. So the, 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 this is all A2 content, or even something from AS, such as enzymes and the Vmax and KM. And um, cell counting, they may give you a hemocytometer. We were discussing that. So for cell counting, and um, these are the experiments. Glucose measurement, they, they, they may give you some kind of experiment in which the enzymes are being used, and they are giving you multiple products, and um, and how to assess that, or electrophoresis. So there's a whole range. They, they, this, this, this kind of question is not limited to a particular part of your syllabus. It may be from AS, it may be from A2, it may be beyond your familiar knowledge. So you have to just follow the criteria. You don't give headings. Don't give these headings of reliability, safety. You, you basically just keep on writing the answer in a continuous prose, in a continuous statements, followed one after the other. And your answer should be coherent enough and, uh, and uh, structured well enough, covering all the details. And with regular practice, you will be able to achieve that. That's all from my side regarding designing experiments. Uh, thank you.